بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد When something is important, a priority, an objective, then a person gives preference to that. Allah Jalla Jalalu has given us a choice, choose deen or dunya. The choice is not to abandon dunya, but it is a matter of priority. Will you prioritize your deen primary and dunya secondary or the other way around? And a good indicator is what am I utilizing my time for and my wealth? That's a sign of what's my priorities. And the choice will have to be made. As Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam explained, أو كما قال من أحب دنياه أضر بآخرته Whoever loves dunya will definitely cause some harm to his آخرة ومن أحب آخرته أضر بدنياه And whoever prefers loves آخرة Some harm will come to dunya فآثروا ما يبقى على ما يفنى Give preference to that which is perpetual, which is permanent, to that which is temporary. So we need to be checking ourselves all the time. Am I worried about my clothing? It's not creased. But in my deen there's so many creases. The car should be shined, spotless. But our hearts are enveloped with darkness, filled with spots. We are knowledgeable about dunya, what about ignorance of akhirah? Are we businessmen of the dunya to make profits, but not traders of the akhirah with losses? Are we rich in dunya, bankrupt in akhirah? Do we have vigor and energy for dunya, lethargic and sluggish for akhirah? Is our dunya first, akhirah last? Is dunya unlimited? We give all the time dunya needs. And for Akhirah, there's a limited time. I've got only so many minutes for Salah, so many minutes for Bayan, so many minutes for Dua. But when it comes to dunya, take your time, no problem, I'm free. For dunya, we're free. For Akhirah, we're always busy. For dunya, we need no motivation, no targheeb. But for Deen, we need targheeb, we need Bayanat, we need Mudakara, we need Ijtima. For dunya, we never sacrifice our deen, but for deen, are we sacrificing our dunya? Our treasures of dunya, we are amassing, we gathering, but I'm not amassing the treasures, the real treasures of akhirah. Are we dying for dunya and we don't live for deen? We don't live for deen. So all these factors of dunya, what motivates me, what prompts me, is it deen? Akhirat, Jannah, Jahannam, Allah and His Rasul, or the flattering of notes, the, the ringing of the coins. That's why one of the Sulaha used to say, Ajib to Linnasi, Kayfa Yahdaruna Ba'da Ta'am Makhafat al Marad. People are very particular about what they eat. I'm amazed, I'm perplexed, I'm baffled by humans that worry about their food, to protect themselves from sickness and disease. They worry about their food, to diet and to keep their bodies slim and trim. وَلَا يَحْذَرُونَ مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ مَخَافَةَ النَّارِ But they're not particular about sins and guna out of the fear of Jahannam. So why do we selectively be particular? It boils down to focus and priority, the priority of Akhirat, priority of death, the Qabr, we're all going to die. Yet, is my diet more important, my gym more important, my leisure, my entertainment? Maqula of the ulama, salli ma'al jama'ati qabla an tusalli alayka al jama'a. You better read your salat with the jama'a. Before the day comes where a Jamaat will read Salat on you, Salatul Janaza. Am I particular about Salat with Jama'ah in the Masjid in the Baytullah? Am I consoled and come 
that I can read in uh, an infiradi, in solidarity. Ulama say, Kam min insanin kathiru thiyab. How many humans have excessive clothing? Qalilu thawab. Kathiru thiyab, qalilu thawab. We've got wardrobes and wardrobes of clothing, but we are paupers with regards to our mal. Ulama say, if we are together, just one of our wardrobes, there's more food in our houses. There are more, there's more clothing in our houses than the entire clothing in Medina Munawara. There's more food in our houses than the entire food in the entire Medina Munawara. Mathkurun fil ard. We want to be remembered on earth. We are posting, we are propagating, we are checking our likes, we want to be remembered on earth. Mahjurun fis sama, but we are obsolete in the heavens. We are non-existent in the asman. We want to be remembered on earth, but we don't want to be remembered in the asman. So does my Allah know me? Knowing someone great is not equal to that person know you. You cannot compare it. You know the president, the question is, does the president know you? Somebody says, I'm in love with the princess, no problem. Does the princess love you? Does she even know you? Like one student, he says, uh, I'm, 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 all, I'm married to the princess. So you ask him how, he said in Arabic there's an usul principle, that something which is more the dominant will overpower, it's considered as if it's done. Like normally when, when we round off number, we round off seven to the nearest zero, if it's three, it goes back down to the bottom. So Al-Akthar Hukmul Kul. So they said, oh, how is that? He said, Nikayan Aqidu Bil Ijab Al Qabul. Nika is proposal and acceptance. I've proposed, that's 50%. I'm just waiting for acceptance. He didn't even go to her, he didn't even do a formal proposal, but he's saying, I've proposed, I've said, Oh Princess, will you marry me? I've done the proposal. As if I'm married. So the question is, you know Allah, does Allah know you? You love Allah, we proclaim, we love Allah, but does Allah love us? So where's our focus? Where's our attention? Where we are turning to? The hukama, the wise used to say, and this is checking. Do I love Allah? Does Allah love me? Am I doing actions that Allah is unhappy with me? When you love somebody, you want to know what you need to do so the love increases and you want to know what you have to abstain from so that you do not become angry and they, they do not, you do not make them angry, they do not hate you, there's no uh, negativity. When Allah hates and despises somebody then He puts three qualities in them. يُحَبِّبُ إِلَيْهِ الصَّالِهِينَ Allah makes it such that this person loves the pious. Hazrat Wala, let's give Hazrat Wala a dawud. We show for Hazrat Wala. Bring him to the house, take barakah, yes, some water blow in Hazrat. Allah gives him the love for the sulha. وَيَمْنَهُ الْإِقْدِدَى بِهِمْ But Allah prevents him from following their advice. So we want all the barakat of the buzruk, but we don't do the real barakat of practicing on what he's saying. وَيُحَبِّبُ إِلَيْهِ الْأَعْمَالَ الصَّالِحَةِ That he will love good deeds and he will do those good deeds as well. وَيَمْنَعُ الْإِخْلَاسِ فِيهَا But he will no, have no ikhlas in that. Like how people of the dunya acquire dunya for name and fame and show, we will be acquiring deen for name and fame. And number three, وَيُجْرِ عَلَى لِسَانِ الْحِكْمَةِ that he will give the biggest vices, the best bayan, the most powerful orator وَيَمْنَعُ الْعَمَلَ بِهِ And he will be void, deprived of practicing on that vices that he gives. So that's مَبْغُوذ Despise عند الله And how do you know if you love by Allah ibn Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi say إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا إِسْتَنَعَهُ لِنَفْسِي when Allah loves somebody, He chose, chooses him for Himself. Somebody has got a big corporate business, he's the CEO of the company, the director. So the best person in the company, what do you say? I want you to work with me side by side. 
Allah chooses him, he's on the side of Allah. وَاجْتَبَاهُ لِمَحَبَّتِهِ And Allah chooses him for his love. وَاسْتَخْلَسَهُ لِعِبَادَتِهِ And Allah chooses him for his ibadah. You get chosen, you are chosen, you don't do. What's the result? فَشَغَلَ هَمَّهُ بِهِ Allah makes his worry and concern only about Allah. And his tongue be dhikri is engaged only in the zikr of Allah. وَجَوَارِحَهُ بِخِدْمَتِهِ and his body is only engaged in doing those amal to make the khidmat of Allah, that Allah be happy with him. The 27th asbab and benefit of taqwa and the need we should make for making tilawat of Qur'an is to be given this glad tidings, glad tidings in dunya, given glad tidings in akhirah, the best of glad tidings ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين. We have made the Quran easy on your tongue so that you may give good news to the muttaqin, glad tidings. And Allah gave Sahaba these glad tidings in this dunya also nowadays, whether it's through a dream, whether it's through somebody else. Allah also gives glad tidings. And Bashara, the wife of Anas bin Malik radiallahu an, says when they were returning from Hudaybiyah, نزلت على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر. These verses were revealed, and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said with regards to these verses, لقد أنزلت علي الليلة آية. أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ Such verses were revealed today that it is more beloved to me than everything on earth. So when these verses were recited to Sahaba, they said, هَنِي أَمَّرِي أَنْ أَوْ نَبِيَ وَاللَّهِ Great congratulations, glad tidings to you. What has Allah revealed for us? So these verses were revealed. لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ إِلَى آخِرِي That Allah admit the believing men and believing women into Jannah beneath which rivers flow. They will love therein forever and Allah will forgive their sins. And this is فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا This is the great success. Surah Fatah, these ayat. So glad tidings for the Nabi of Allah, glad tidings for Sahaba. And Anas رضي الله عنه reports that uh, when these ayat were revealed and uh, Sahaba were grieved, then uh, these verses of glad tidings of clear victory were granted to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and Sahaba. Hazrat Bara radiyallahu anhu saying, تَعُدُّونَ أَنْتُمْ الْفَتَحْ فَتَمَكَّ You will consider the conquest of Makkah because this ayat is a glad tidings for a conquest and victory. So you will consider the conquest, the victory, the fatah of Makkah, where Sahaba conquered Makkah. That Allah was giving them glad tidings of the conquest. وَنَحْنُ نَعُدُّ الْفَتْحَ بَيْأَةَ الرِّذْوَانِ يَوْمَ الْحُدَيْبِيَةِ But we consider on the day of Hudaybiyah, when we took the Ba'at allegiance on Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's hands, that was the actual conquest because it was the conquering of the hearts. It was the conquering of the hearts. Samli Jabi radiallahu anhu, ma kunna na'udu al-fata illa yawm al-hudaybiya. That the actual conquest was when the hearts were so overwhelmed with the love of Allah and His Rasul that there was an opportunity for deen, for Umrah. And when you can sacrifice deen for deen, when you can sacrifice deen for deen. The same way Allah used to tell people, say do not ever look down upon any scholar of deen, for when he goes out in the path of Allah, he is sacrificing deen for deen. You people are sacrificing dunya for deen. Ulama have to sacrifice deen for deen. One ibadah over another ibadah. So glad tidings came to Sahaba radiallahu anhum, such glad tidings that uh, it is beyond comprehension and we cannot understand. Likewise, in Khandak, 
in the battle of the trench when they were Saba were digging a large bowl that came as an obstacle and Nabi alayhi salam took a spade and he placed his shawl next to the trench and he read these ayat وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا The words of your Rabb has been completed in truth and justice. There will be no changing of the words of Allah. So when these uh, words were recited, Nabi salam struck the first bowler, recited the second bowler, recited these ayat and third time recited these ayat. Hazrat Salman was watching and a spark flashed a spark flashed and uh, on the third boulder Nabi salam got out as Salman was there and he said I was watching you Nabi of Allah you struck the boulder and every time I seen a brilliant spark flashing Nabi salam said did you see that he said yes I definitely seen that and in another riwayat Sahaba said when Nabi salam hit the boulder وَبَرَقَتْ مِنْهَا بَرْقَةٌ أَضَاءَتْ لَهَا مَا بَيْنَ لَا بَتَيْهَا Between the mountains of Mecca, the two mountains, such a spark flashed that it lit up everything between there. And they say, this spark was such كَأَنَّهَا مِزْبَاهٌ فِي جَوْفِ لَيْلٍ مُظْلِمٍ As if it was like a lantern, a bright lantern in the middle of a dark night. Nabi Salam said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The echoes of the cry of Rasulullah would be heard. So the glad tidings, what glad tidings? Nabi Salam explained to Saba when I struck the first time the cities of the Persian Emperor and their surrounding cities was shown to Nabi salam and conquering those cities. Then Nabi salam was requested by Sahaba to make dua for them which he made dua. Then secondly when I struck it the second time the cities of the Roman Emperor fell. Then Nabi salam was requested to make dua and again he did so. Then when I struck it the third time the cities of Abyssinia and the surroundings were shown that they will be conquered as well. Then he advised Sahaba, leave the Abyssinians as long as they leave you alone and leave the Turks as long as they leave you alone. So you was Sahaba who never had enough food, enough clothing, any resources whatsoever but Nabi wasalam, is giving them glad tidings. It's like today we're saying we'll conquer the US, the U uh, China, Russia, and outwardly there's no resources. So the Munafiqeen looked at that and they said he tells you people about uh, conquering the Persian and the Roman empires, Madain, Hira, that you are here in Yathrib, you are saying conquering places, you dig in trenches, you can't even conquer the enemies in this battlefield here. Then ayat will reveal again glad tidings. وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ When the hypocrites and those who were diseased in their hearts, they said, Allah and His Rasul have made only deceptive promises to us. نَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the munafiqeen and the, the hypocrites. And that's when Thabi ibn Akram told Hazrat Abu Huraira, Kanna katara jumu an kathira. Abu Huraira, do you ever see a large concentration of forces? He said, Yes. You did not witness, you did not witness the battle of Badr with us. For it was not because of great numbers. Inna lam tun sar bil kathrati. It wasn't got, it's got nothing to do with numbers. Allah's glad tidings are with the people of Iman, the Muttaqeen. As Khalid bin Walid said when he was asked, Ma akthar al Rum wa qal al Muslimin. The Romans are many, Muslims are few in number. He said, Ma akal al Rum wa akthar al Muslimin. The Romans are less in number, the Muslims are a lot. Why? Inna ma takthur al Junood bin Nasr. We conquer because of the great numbers of the Nusrat of Allah. 
of the help of Allah. Abdullah ibn Rawa also, when the enemy were 200,000, he addressed the people. Ya qawmi wallahi inna allati takrawna lillati kharajtum tatlubun. That thing which you dislike and the very thing which you have left, martyrdom, we have come for martyrdom. We have never fought with reliance in our numbers, our strength. مَا نُقَاتِلُمْ إِلَّا بِهَذَا الدِّينَ الَّذِي أَكْرَمًا لَوْفْ بِهِ We've only fought with the strength of deen which Allah has blessed us. So march ahead, people then said that, O oh, Rawaha, Wallahi Sadaq ibn Rawaha. O oh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, you have spoken the truth. You have spoken the truth. So we do not be victorious based on our numbers. We are victorious based on the Nusrat and the help of Allah. That's for the people of Iman and the Muttaqeen. The Amal for today is that we should be turning to Allah for all needs and never ask the creation. Nabi Ali Islam told us, Abu Dhar halaka ila al ba'a wa al jannah. Pledge allegiance and you ate jannati. He spread his hands and he took ba'at. Ala alla tas ala nas shay'a. Don't ask anybody for anything. Not even your wap if it falls on the ground to take it. Never ask the creation for anything. If you need anything, ask Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru dawana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.